Here is the infamous Black Eyed Susan. Aren't they pretty? Yes. And sometimes you get some ones that have really nice, deep, dark, intense centers. Look at that. Really beautiful. It's a hot, sunny day out here. But hey, let's have fun hanging a little short. So now, now I took those beautiful Black Eyed Susans and I put them in a vase. I probably should take out some more leaves. But now, when you have them in a vase, you can actually study them more and you can paint from there. You could take a photograph and paint your photograph. Or not paint your photograph, just paint from the live flowers themselves. Which I think we're going to do today. Okay, for this exercise, I'm just going to grab one brush today. My Robert Simmons Sapphire half inch round, I mean, excuse me, oval brush. And we're just going to go really loosely painting this. We're going to be grabbing some Cabin Yellow Deep. Just getting it wet right here, adding a lot of water, depending on how much water you want, how much concentration of the color. As you can see, we've got the Black Eyed Susans without the reddish brown in the middle, and then we have the other ones that I have there. And we're just going to loosely paint these. And I like this brush because it just lends itself to making the petals. So you hold it on its angle, on its side, and you just go like that to make perfect little daisies, petals. I am just using the beautiful flowers as reference. I'm not going to paint exactly how they look. You just get the feel of the, the petals and the movement. And we're just going to use this. Obviously my picture is going to be small on the knees. <laughs> the foreshadowing are way in the middle of the ground. I'm just going to put a bunch of these so you're just pushing this down on its side. Really simple with this kind of brush. You can curve them, get a little more concentrated with the color, the intensity. You can make them bigger. I'll put a little small half one over here. Kind of working work on opposite opposite. So threes, fives. So let's put another one up here. And the one up here could have that reddish brown inside of the petal. Just like so. Now they're very damp and wet. If I put the color inside right now, it's just gonna bleed everywhere. You wanna kind of wait so I've got one, two, three, four. I want a fifth, the fifth wheel. I'm going to make one that's kind of on its side. And if I wanted to add more, again, I would add two more. All right, maybe another one on its side up here. Small petals. I'm going to do the seven then. I think odd numbers just work better. Put another one on its side, kind of up, up in here. Two up here on its side. So this is starting to dry. While that starts to dry, I can mix up my greens. It's very bright, very green. So peacock blue. Get some of that all right in here. Clean up your brush. Grab some of that yellow. Make some nice pretty green. Very vibrant green. You can make up a couple of greens. Get a little bit darker. Grab some Prussian blue. And you got a deeper green. So simply by holding this brush on its side, I'm gonna grab some more paint. I guess I'm getting messy with my palette, but that's okay. I can. So for the leaves, again, you can push down and pull back. Simple leaves kind of hanging out here. And I'm just doing this movement like this, as you can see. Connecting maybe that one, and then putting a leaf. That's another movement too. That's going to be the top.
This is the stem for the other ones. Just put a leaf out here. I'm not going to get too crazy with them. This one's going to crisscross to connect to this one. And then you can have this one coming down. You can still have this one coming down. So you get this kind of connection, crisscrossing. And you grab some of the darker green, put some of those leaves in here, in between. Oh, a little burnt ember. Grab some more yellow. So it's just this movement. Just like that. I'm not going to fuss with it too much. And as you can see, my yellow is kind of dried a lot lighter. You can go back in and add some just greens kind of haphazardly going like that. So this yellow is pretty intense, as you can see, a little pale. So we're going to go back in, grab, I'm going to clean off my yellow because I made a mess with the green. <laughs> Grab a bunch of this yellow. Maybe add a little magenta. And you get this intense orangey yellow. Right? A little too much orange, so I'm gonna go back in, add more yellow. And now we get that deep yellow. And you can go back in right on top of your yellows that you did. Get some areas that are pretty more intense of an orangey kind of yellow. Not everywhere. So you can see looks a little too much orange. Let's go back in again. Grab some more yellow. I don't want it to be too flat. So that one first tone of yellow we put in is making it kind of flat. While it's still damp, you could add in the deeper orangey yellow too. Now it's changing, right? I wouldn't go, I don't know if I would go over every single petal, just a few. And you can just go over the petals with just bright yellow too. So for that one right here, with that intense reddish brown center, a little red, a little brown, a little yellow. Basically, you just use burnt umber if you wanted to. Again, with the same brush. So now, see, this is damp. What's going to happen? It's going to bleed. You have to do like a real fast line going in the middle of your petal. But it's interpretation. It doesn't have to be perfect. So we're going in here, wisping in that line. So you get that intense, beautiful one. I like this guy. So I would just put a few of those. Wouldn't put them everywhere. Maybe one a pair or two. This is just a loose study of some flowers you might have in your yard. So then for the actual center right here, that's pretty deep brown. I'm going to use my burnt umber again. I'm going to grab some of my black wash. I like to cheat with the black wash. Make a real intense brown. And you just make it look a little dome. Because it's like a black brown. And just put the little in the center. Since it's pretty concentrated, it shouldn't bleed too much. And up here. It's like a little half dome. Think of a gumdrop. that in there. Look at our center. If it does bleed, just another way of making a really loose kind of see that one bled a lot. Well, that's so okay. we just use that one brush and I'm gonna grab a Princeton number four long round. I'm gonna make some darker greens. Make 
this and just go in put in some little ah, little doodads just gives it more interest like you know it looks like grass kind of in here just feels like more movement you can just add some more intensity of the color you don't have to do this but I particularly wanted to do this because I felt like it needed something just go in here you can go into the crevices in between some of these petals get that deep green in there and add some more green play around with it guys it's just a simple exercise taking some of your garden flowers and having them come to life and sometimes they're really loose sketchy type designs end up being the so I hope you guys one. enjoy this little short don't forget to uh, if you haven't subscribed please subscribe so here's a close-up um, and hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up go outside look at nature walk around your yard if you have any flowers or even if you don't have a yard if you have any flowers on your balcony or wherever, or even if you don't even have that either, you go to a park. It's simple as that. Grab your little palette and have fun. Take care, guys. Have a great day.